Do you have a little dog that growls and gets nasty with people and maybe even tries to bite people? Maybe even people inside of your own family that they know and love. Well, today we're going to talk about that. We're going to be talking about possessive behavior. This is Luke Smith with the Packsmith Dog Training, and we're here to teach you everything that you need to know to have good relationships through great communication with your pack. So we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about possessive behavior. People, whenever a dog wants to keep other people away from their favorite person, and possessive behavior is just another type of dominance that's out there. It is saying that this person is mine and you have to come through me to touch them. And uh, that's not something that we want from our dogs. It's not something that we should accept in our household uh, for a number of reasons. It uh, puts our dog in the position to where, number one, they're telling us what to do. They're telling us how we're allowed to behave, which violates our pack structure order. And uh, second of all, it's just a danger. You know, if you're gonna have a little dog that's gonna snap at people, then that's gonna be a pretty bad thing. So we want to go ahead and address this situation and make sure that we get it right and we can discourage the dog from doing that in the best way possible. So um, you can go the very old fashioned way and just make the dog wish that it had never done that. And uh, you know, when we're talking about getting butt weapons and whatever, um, you can do that. I'm not um, saying that that's necessarily the best answer because we don't want to actually encourage more animosity between the people who it is that uh, they're getting nasty with and the dog themselves. And we also don't want to, um, we don't want to put the dog in a position to where we're overusing our corrections. Um, it is, it is potentially a way to get it done, but um, I want to specify some more important things that we want to focus on. Number one, especially with little dogs, you have the opportunity to get a hold of them and take their power away. Um, everybody has seen the mother pick the dog up by the back of the neck and we can do the same thing. It's called scruffing a dog and it doesn't hurt the dog. They're built for it. They have extra skin around their neck for that purpose and you can pick the dog up and when you do, the head can't move very much because the skin's tight and you have the opportunity to take the power away from the dog and that's really what we're going to want to focus on is we're going to show the dog that they're presenting all of this you know big energy for us to try and scare us off and we want to just show them that we're not afraid of that and that it's not working at all and now it's not a matter of getting uh intense with them or anything like that you want to keep a nice calm behavior um a nice calm energy and show them that you are not affected by their behavior then the second step to this process is what we like to call shunning we want to send the dog away so if they're being possessive let's say of the mom in the family then it's important for the mom actually to be the one who sends the dog away. Because if the dad or the boyfriend or whatever it happens to be says, uh, says no, you're being bad and runs them off in some sort of an aggressive manner, then what's going to happen is, is that's just going to increase the animosity between the dogs. It's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to tax the relationship. If the mother corrects the dog and sends the dog away, then now we're actually taking away the thing that the dog wants in reaction to their behavior because their behavior is not appropriate for them to be possessive of the mom because the mom's actually in charge. And then that is saying that I, your behavior is costing you this relationship that you're seeking. And now that doesn't have to be for a very long time. It, what it needs to happen is, is that the dog needs to accept this and move on and accept its shunning from, from the situation before you let it come back in, but then you are gonna let it come back in and let it retry. Let it get the opportunity to do it right this time and it will find out that you don't offer this negative that you're offering to it unless it behaves improperly, unless it treats everybody in the house with disrespect because we wanna make sure that respect is part of our relationship with our dogs. If you respect me, I am happy to give you access to all of the things that you want in life. If you disrespect me, I'm not going to give you access to them at all. And it's not because of who you are as a being, it's because of your behavior specifically. Um, the other thing is, is they, the people that I talked to had this morning had um, been putting their dog in a kennel as a result of this behavior. And I wanna say that that's probably not the best idea. A lot of times dogs really like their kennels and it is viewed as a very safe space. It's a comfortable space for them to be in, for them to be safe in. So we don't want to use the kennel and think that the kennel is going to be a correction for them. 
Yes, it is still separation, but they don't think about it that way because they physically can't get to you. It's when they can physically get to you and you do not let them and you shoo them away then that is whenever they're going to understand the shunning principle. And they'll realize that they don't want to be shunned in this situation. They want to be a part of the family. And so they'll learn to come back a different way. And you give them access to do that again in a very short period of time. So this is Luke Smith here with the Packsmith Dog Training. I hope this helps you uh, find better relationships with your pack. You want to have good, clear communication and you want to have good, solid leadership. And that will put you in a position to where you can have peace in your life. Love you.